Well, how y'all are? <clears throat> Say, listen. That's the opening of the video. Uh, Ed and I decided yesterday to get up real early and drive down to Smoky Mountain Night Works in Sevierville, Tennessee. And, you know, you got to be careful down there because you don't want to get in trouble while I'm going to jail in a place called Sevierville. They, they might be severe. No, not really. Everybody down there was so nice. Uh, we went to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which was a lot bigger deal than I anticipated it being. Um, you know, it's, ooh, got me a cool hat. And these things were like $4.50, and it's a really nice made hat. And I noticed when I was down there shopping and trying to look, of course, I didn't make a very good video. I didn't know if they were going to be open to being videoed in their store. It turned out that they were very open to being videoed in their store, and everybody was very helpful. Um, I was really impressed with the floor staff. They, they, were, they were hopped to it, and how are you, by God? Uh, I met some very nice people from on the other side of the counter. Um, there's just so much more to look at in there. And now that they're, now that I know that they're video friendly, um, we may do some other method than just handheld next time. Matter of fact, up in the summer, we plan to go back and do another video there. Um, a couple of points I've noticed. I like cold steel and I like marbles. Now, some of the marble stuff is made in China. Um, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, the big stuff. Now, let me see. I think the machetes and so forth are all made in South America which is where good machetes come from, you know. Um, their large knives are still made in Gladstone, um, Michigan. Their smaller stuff typically is made in China, but their quality is very nice, and they have a standard that they maintain. Same way with cold steel. So me and Ed are both cold steel and... and um, um do 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 deep marbles fans and um you know we did real good the the prices were really cheap <clears throat> i bought a knife a marbles branded knife for six dollars and fifteen cents that i looked on Amazon this morning was $29. So is it worth driving down there? Um, yeah, yeah, it's worth driving down there. At least it is for me. Now, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, if you live in, you know, if you live in Middletown, Ohio, it's maybe not a good idea to drive up there and down there. You know, and if you live in, in, uh, in Havana, it's probably not a good idea to drive up there. But if you live around here in the te Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, uh, area, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, North Georgia area, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably a good idea to drive up there if you like, if you're a knife buyer. Well, all right, then. Uh, I got a couple of pieces of video that the camera being going walky and handheld and so forth went to portrait view instead of landscape view but i'm going to put them in there anyway because i think that i think it's worth watching there's one young lady in there in charge of the sharpening and engraving department that we'll all just love all right here we go we made the smoky mountain knife works i walked around in here for 20 minutes before i realized i needed to start filming this is the boker case it's pretty nice
there's so much in here to look at, I forget to film anything. Spin West and stuff. Poker hatchets and axes. The Wall of Shrade. I got so busy looking at stuff, I'm too, I get, forget to film. Cold steel, folks. Me and Ed were talking about in the parking lot whether or not we need to carry a gun in here, and we decided not to, even though Tennessee is an open carry and constitution carry state. I figured, you know, well, what happened was if somebody started any nonsense in here, axes and knives would be flying around like big trouble in little China, the alley fight scene. So I figured we'd be fairly safe. I'll make a YouTube video about this place. Fine. Yeah, that's what the guy on the phone said. I called last week to make sure that I could. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the cold steel heaven. Look at that. Hey, wait a minute. Well, there's a fin wolf just like mine. There's a fin hawk just like mine it's my, in my survival kit. I'll be spending most of my money right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a bad feel. I'm a, let's make sure we both got enough money to get home on. That's the thing. <clears throat> Look at that. Might possibly see some discontinued cold steel knives here. Those are always worth picking up. There's SOG stuff. That's for the snooty people. Geez, here's the marble booth. Let's go over to the marble booth. Oh my goodness. I love marbles now. I love Marvel's knives. Hatchets and machetes. And marble straight razors. I spent a bunch of money in here. I'll buy me one of them, cut my throat when the wife finds out how much I spent. There's a U.S. Mark Marbles Hawkbill. This is what you need. And straight razors. A mini machete. And mini machetes. That's nice. I like this guy. That's about my speed right there. Marble's Axe Wedge. This 
What's your name? Jeez. All right, I'm going to cut this off for a minute so I can look around. Looks pretty good, actually. They want 12 grand for it, but, you know. Wait a minute. I may have actually found something. What we got here? Well, what's that? That's one of them old wool sleeping bags you can't get out of. Front seam, swivel bale, liner's not much pumpkin. I always look at helmets, I can't help myself. I heard one up there for 125 bucks. It's back seam, swivel bale. Ten dollars at the flea market. Rear seam, swivel bale, driven over tent stack in the Commonwealth, Kentucky. It's um, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Sheesh. You buy one of them for 50 bucks. You know, civil defense helmet, war production fire helmet. I'm never gonna look. Hound up here. Yeah. 12 gauge. 750. It's pretty decent. It's actually a very good deal for that. Condition looks good. And it's it's uh it's C and R, it's not a uh, it's, well it's uh yeah. It's it's age, it's 18. Yeah. 1850, 1860. So it's not a class three, it's just uh, because of its age. There's a blunder boost. Blunder boost. There's a box of box blanks. Forty five dollars. Jeez. Simple syringe. Where are you going? Oh, oh, just right over there. To match it. Where are you going? I thought I'd find one here, but the only ones that We're down to the flea market stuff now. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? What? He's talking about that one guy that's got What the hell is that? What is that? What are you looking for? I'll just come here looking at books for a moment. Sometimes you find some interesting stuff. Well, I'm looking for the place to sit down again. 
This is all flea market stuff. There was a syphilis syringe over there I wanted you to look at. Thought you might be able to use that somewhere down the line. Spray, no matter where you go. And bull whips. And pink riding crops. And then over here we have a collection of spittoons. Ed, try one of those spittoons on. <laughs> what is this? Is the what is that? The game of knives chair? Hop up in there. Let's see how you look in it. Oh sure, why not? Yep, you look ridiculous. Okay. Young man, is there an elevator downstairs to get old people back up to the top? There is one downstairs, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll go down there then. Let's, let's go down there. If I got to ride back, you know. There's cave water pocket knife blades on display. I don't know if that's K-Bar as in K-Bar Combat Knife. I think that's something else. What'd you find there? I was on Survivor. Oh, uh, Thailand. It's a wonder they survived. Here's another one been on Survivor in Thailand. Like that, you're wondering to survive. You take something better than that, you know. Case commemorative smatch it. Commemorative Raider buoy. Another smash it. They seem to like smash it here. We're here. As you can see, it's much more than just knives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more in this place than just knives. What if them steel pots over our front seam? I reckon we'll go down there and look. They got Indian rocks. Novelties and all kinds of stuff. Well, let's go down there and look. There's a the big fountain full of money with the big knife sticking out of it. Somebody's wishing pretty hard they throw their pocket knife in there. Well, we'll get him another one around here somewhere. Folks don't even need their water to throw change in there. Well, howdy, neighbor. For those of you guys that follow Central Kentucky Bushcraft, they got every Etsy ever made in here.
there just absolutely broke out with Etsy. I'm getting this little clip for uh, getting this little clip for David over at Central Kentucky Bushcraft. He's a big Etsy fan, buddy. And mm -hmm. They've got them all. Little survival kits. Everything. Take your picture for, can I? Would you turn around for me, please? <laughs> There's a young lady. Is that all of your work you have to do today, or is that what you normally carry? I just like to carry this at work. Um, the ones that I like to carry are a bench made and a sock that I have at home that's currently in parts because I'm taking a part. But I think my new everyday carry is this guy. The only reason is because he cut me recently, and I was like, oh, I'm getting revenge, so bottom. Thank you very much. That is the young lady who no one messes with right there. All right, let's walk around a little bit. Take a look around, see what's around to be had and seen. I'm looking for a place to sit down. I haven't found it yet. Here's a cheap tool. Knife maintenance tool. Keep picking stuff up and forgetting to show it on camera. Camouflage face paint, back scratchers. Fourteen bucks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll try to get some video footage in before I. Before I start actually doing my personal shopping. This place goes down and down and down. If I get all the way down there, I'll have to find me some kind of a rope, rope to get back up. There's a big old dagger stuck in that rock right there. I guess we could walk down there. They got an elevator to get you back up? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. There's the new fangled cases for the young whippersnappers. And here's a bunch of... Oh, look. There's my knife right there. See one right there, down there? Yeah. Yellow bone double. Double bladed small trapper. Oh, that's nice. It's 55 bucks. Chinese ammo cans. There's Wildcat Blue case knife. Daddy go crazy and buy her one of them. Let's wander downstairs. We can find our way down to the next level of depravity. So let me see I'm right there. Here, would you hold that camera for me? It's a nice big double bladed hunter. I need a pocket knife to get it open. <laughs> All right, you. There we go. I'm not completely into it yet, no. <laughs> Yes, please. I'll get a pocket knife out to get in there and get it open. 
What'd you say this was? $21.99. For marbles? Yep, $21.99 marbles. It comes with that knife, comes with four quality blades. One of them can be, can be used for wood cutting, which would be that one would be best for that. It yeah. comes with a I like it because black leather case. When you get into a deer's guts and you break a blade, you still got one. I like the double bladed hunter style like that. All right, we're gonna take that in there. And then, what's this old boy right here? Oh, that's a European double hunter. Take it, pull it out. Yeah. Guard comes out, fold this in. You can skin a deer or take out a sentry. <laughs> okay. Yep, that, that little thing folds up to keep it more solid so it's more of a fixed blade. This locks it. Yep. So when it's open, it's like that. Yep. All right, let's look at one more pocket knife before we get out of here. And uh, The Marbles Jet Pilot knife, have you got it? It's a fixed blade, military style knife. I don't see it in this case. How much is this? Let's see that guy. This one here. This right here is $107.99. That's, that's like the original, original marbles pattern hunting knife. Yeah. So a genuine leather case. Well, that's a little bit too much for me today, I guess. But I got a feel I'm gonna be back. <laughs> got a feel I'm gonna be back. Everyone, everyone always does come back. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Let's see this old hawkbill over here. This one will will run you six dollars and ninety nine cents, and it's marked U.S. Now look, I'm a combat engineer. I don't ever remember seeing a U.S. Hawkbill. You so know they are awful handy. Yeah. That sounds like an excellent deal for that. How much is it? Six dollars and ninety nine. Oh hell, I'll take it too. Put that in the pile. <laughs> I like marbles. I've always have. All right, I guess that's enough for me. Now he gets to follow me over there. You, you take the register? Uh, or I take the register? There's a, yeah, there's a new system. There's about 13, 14 registers all over the building. Somebody over there at the Blue Balloon. <laughs> all right, young man, I appreciate your help. See you, bud. Let's walk. Bear with me. Here. <laughs> we are filming now. What's the matter with you? This is a YouTube channel, you know. I know it is. I'll take the tire. All the way home, everybody will know where we've been. Yeah. Remember that time that uh, Nick bought those cowboy hats in Conneaut? And we were wearing those cowboy hats. We stopped at rest there, and that Mexican tried to sell us a truckload of cattle with the truck. <laughs> oh, we have our hats, sir. <laughs> oh, we have our hats. <laughs> Card. Well, there's some things in here that are pretty expensive. Well, yeah. But marbles and cold steel stuff that we like? Well, yeah. Gee. Or not as expensive. Not as ridiculous. You.
turn it off.